Beautiful sunshine. Nice day. Hey! Hey! Watch it! Hey, what are you, crazy? Hey! Wait a minute. Welcome to the Junkyard, where our two talented teams have battled their way through to the semifinals. Now they face a challenge of dizzying heights. Today's challenge is to fashion a flying machine out of all this filthy flotsam. These gliders, and there's no engines allowed this week, will have to carry one lucky team member up and away to the deep blue yonder. The pilot who stays airborne the longest will lift his team to glory and the Junkyard Wars finals. So, let's meet the teams. In hot-blooded red, it's the Miami Gearheads, our temperamental trio of Latino lowriders. I'm Milton, I'm the captain of the Miami Gearheads. My teammates are Frank and Anthony, and we have the best team there is. Frank is the monster of the team. He can be welding four days, non-stop. No food, no water, he'll do it. My name is Frank. We're looking forward just to have plain fun. I mean, we're looking forward just to like kid around as much as we can and just make it happen. Anthony is a practical guy of the team. Hi, my name is Anthony. I'm part of the Miami Gearheads. I'm uh, from uh, Venezuela. Frank is Cuban. Milton's from Puerto Rico. We got that Caribbean chemistry going on. That's, that's how we get along. I have the best team, that's it. We're, if we're going to the show, we're going to win. We, we are, are the Miami, Miami Gearheads. Gearheads. And we're going back home with that trophy. Yeah. We're taking everybody out. That's right. In the first round, the Gearheads managed to bridge themselves over troubled water and straight into today's semi-final. To get the gearheads into overdrive is oddball expert Chuck Slusercik. He's got his head in the clouds in more ways than one. A pioneer of modern hang gliding, Chuck experimented with some psychedelic designs in the 70s. A few wipeouts later, and he was flying high. Hoping to immobilize the gearheads, direct from Oregon are the Hicks family, Pops and his two little girls. Hi, I'm Sam. I'm the captain of the Hicks team, with daughter Jakey and Anna. I'm Jakey, and I'm the oldest daughter on the Hicks family team. I'm Anna, the youngest member of the Hicks family. Jakey, she's a lot more mechanical than Anna, but Anna, she's, she does good in welding. Dad is just amazing. He can build anything out of absolutely nothing. Dad is definitely in charge. You have to be very willing to take orders with Dad. Once you get past the hard, you know, candy coating, he's all mushy in the middle. We're the Hicks family, and we're gonna eat everybody for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. In their previous round, it was a clash of the clans in a very uncivil family war. The Hicks girls blew away the Washburn boys with their gunpowder cannon. This week's family allowance is barnstorming boffin Barnaby Wayne fan. Barnaby's simply dripping in high-tech qualifications. He's designed and built some of the world's most advanced and odd-looking aircraft. He's got more brains than a black box recorder and he ain't afraid to use them. Time for the teams to learn their lofty challenge. Welcome back, Miami Gearheads. Yay! And hello again, Hicks family. <laughs> Today's challenge is all about ups and downs, peaks and valleys, highs and lows. Well, you get the point. I want you to build me a glider. <laughs> oh, yeah! Yes. OK, you're pros at this game now, so you know the other important rule, which is you get just 10 hours to build your machines. The time starts from when the junkyard gonger gongs. Are you ready? Ready. ready? ready! Go! Remember, it's the glider that stays in the air the longest that wins. So it's off to their separate shops for some scheming. I guess a glider. I know it's semi-final time and everything, but I'm pretty anxious about this flying business. Oh gosh, it's not that bad. It's easy. Watch, look. You have a glider. You fly. Okay, we need a glider. I know it's going to be time in the air, not distance. So we want to concentrate on big and light. 
We want lots of wing area. Okay. When we get done, it's going to fill the bay. We're going to okay. be wingtip to wingtip. All right. So I want to do something kind of like uh, an ultralight. The key to staying airborne is very big wings. The Hicks proposed the simplest design, an ultralight with no engine. Two triangular shaped wings will be attached to a long keel. A tail at the back stabilizes the glider and the pilot hangs underneath in a cockpit. Let, let's just like a good boy scout, Barnaby is always prepared. The experts in, I guess, basically, for the, for the scavenging crew, we'll, we'll give you a want sheet to take out with you. Great. And we'll Amazingly, the here. rowdy hicks are stunned into uh, silence by their motor mouth expert. Frame built, and then the keel. Over the wall, Gearhead's Captain Milton has some good news. Now we'll have a big advantage. Uh, I've flown before, I fly ultralights. Oh, this is, so I couldn't have asked for it. All right. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> But they the still want to go for a very un-ultralight design. To stay up. So what we want to do is the lightest wing area and a biplane will give us the most wing area that we can get. So we're going to build a frame out of wood with ribs, hang a tail on the back. It's going to look just like a Wright Brothers airplane but with the tail in the back. Elevators, rudder, it's going to fly like a bird. The gearheads are going for an old-fashioned biplane. This madcap design maximizes wing surface by having two sets, one above the other. The pilot sits in between them, and a tail hangs off the back. The drawback is that making two wings will literally double the gearhead's workload. But those uh, low-riding loons aren't daunted uh, by their uh, screwy the scheme. Plastic. Plastic. Okay, yeah. guys, plastic we have a shopping list here. Wood, wheels, wire, plastic, aluminum. Taking charge, Captain Sam dishes out the orders. All right, cable, wheels, tubing, round tubing and square tubing. We're gonna need smaller tubing. Looks good, mister. Let's go. Okay. All right. Let's go get it. Let's keep right. on coming the radio. All right. With just 10 hours to build a glider from nothing more than garbage, our semi-finalists head out to the yard to uncover some goodies. In this game, it's first come, first served. So the race is on. Yes! Coming down! Got it! This sister act is mean. Okay. Fiery Frank is even meaner. I'm gonna have your sister for lunch. It's no holds barred. Because at stake is a place in the Junkyard Wars final. Will the Miami gearheads get bamboozled in their search for bamboo? And will the Hicks family find their bag of aluminum tricks? Stick around and find out. <laughs> Welcome back to Junkyard Wars. It's the semi-final, and we've set our teams the daunting task of building gliders out of junk. But will they be soaring like eagles or sitting ducks? In green is our homegrown team, the Hicks family. They're keeping it simple with a large-winged monoplane. Nice! You go, sister. Pull it all off. All under the strict supervision of egg-headed expert Barnaby. But household head Sam ain't used to taking orders. In red, neighbors from hell, the Miami gearheads, are going for an ultra-complicated biplane. And if we get too soft a wire, if we have copper, it stretches. First time you put a little load, it'll stretch and everything will be loose like a goose. Out in the yard, Anthony is ready to rumba. Olé! But it's not for their in-flight entertainment. Chuck just wants the wires. Hold on, let me check the wire sizes that are in there. Okay, that's 40,000. These guys, right through here. Oh, that'll work? Yeah, how long are they? <laughs> I've got to stop you before you demolish this perfectly served uh, Well, yeah. We need it, we need it. <laughs> okay, you've got to tell me why, because I'm utterly bewildered at this point. We need wire to hold the wings of the plane, so... Oh, is that that's, what it's for? Yes, it's pretty strong. We must pliers good, and they're low. That's good wire for your job, is it's it? It's lovely wire, because it's, it's spring steel. <laughs> Music wire or a piano wire. So it is this, looks like this it's is a standard stone. procedure. Oh yeah, this is the world. stuff that was used in World War One. You're kidding what me. They held all fighter planes together. The gearheads want the wire to fix their biplane wings together. Their big problem is that the wing frames will be made from hundreds of bits of wood, and putting it together will be like a giant jigsaw puzzle. <laughs> Expert Chuck is already singing the blues. So here we are in the junkyard. We got the blues. 
We ain't got no wood. Oh, he got ugly shoes. <laughs> Chuck's war cry sends the scavengers scampering. Okay, shoot, guys, shoot. Captain Milton has his own less tuneful rendition. Wood, 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 wood is the main. Number one, wood. We need wood. Wood number one. The one. A drum or something. The planks they up. found are big and heavy, so they need to rip them up into light strips. Out in the junkyard, the Hick sisters are doing it for themselves. Hey, but you know what? This might work for a pilot seat. Excellent, Jakey perfect. thinks she's found the perfect seat. Pilot seat! There you go! <laughs> Barnaby has his own ideas. Okay, we're gonna wanna, what I'm envisioning is, you know, pilot seat here, rudder pedals there, there's my landing gear. Okay, mount the stick off here, the A-frame will come out about here and go up above me. What exactly are we trying to make here? We're making a glider, but, but basically it's gonna think of two large yacht sails flying in formation. So what are these long pipes right here? What are these for? Okay, those are going to be the leading edges of our wings. We're going to use them. They're like the mass of the boat almost, but we're going to have the two of them laid down in formation. Uh, that black one that's been Sam's already cut, that's one wing. I mean, think <laughs> about the world's largest butterfly on steroids. The Hicks design is quite simple. For the wings, they'll use their longest pieces of aluminium. A strong, thick beam will make the keel and their dolly will be transformed into a cockpit to hang underneath. Out in the yard, mischievous mechanic Frank has found some sliced wood. That's good stuff. Find me, all, yeah. find me all of that you can find. I'm gonna go to steal the next door because they took some that I have found. Always keen to cut corners, he heads for the Hicks family workshop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, we've been robbed. Next guy who steals some gets an aluminum tube where he doesn't want one. Frank looks happy with himself, but he better avoid those Hick sisters. Hey, Ooh, you know, the, the hapless hombre here. walks straight what? into them. Yeah. What are you stealing? <laughs> Miami thief head? The, I had to do it, man. I had to. I got a family to feed. Shut up. You guys have any you kids? You guys have any kids? Yes. Back at the Is Hicks homestead, Captain around, Sam yeah. wants to weld the oh, cockpit together. Welding? But it's the first sign of a power struggle. No, you can't do it. It won't be strong enough. Yes, it will. No, it won't. Yes, it will. No, trust me. It's T6 stuff. No, you try to, you try to weld it, it's going to fail. Don't no, do it's it. Not. Bolt it. It's not going to fail if you weld it. Yeah, well, with my butt in it, it's not going to get welded, okay? Please, trust and me on this one. Where's that pipe bender at? I Old to... Sea Dog Sam is used to being captain of his ship. He usually gives orders, not takes them. Collapse. I know. Okay. I used to do this for a living. Good. I've been in the Navy for 25 years, so. Okay, let's and that's see. That's what I did was piping, welding, the whole nine yards. Okay, well. Sheet metal. Okay, good. This aluminum stuff is tricky stuff, though. Unimpressed, Barnaby gets back to his clipboard. In the true spirit of junkyard craziness, the pioneering aviators came up with some wacky designs. But unpowered flight really took off when NASA scientists considered using gliders to ease space capsules back to Earth. In the end, they settled for parachutes and gliders were forgotten. It was left to some chilled out Californians who, in the late 60s, wondered if kites could carry humans. And modern hang gliding was born. The other extreme of aviation is the Navy's multi-million dollar combat fighter plane, the F.A. 18 Hornet. Someone who's flown these and one of the Navy's first female fighter pilots is Missy Cummings. So she's the perfect person to judge today's hair-raising challenge. Hey, Missy. Hey, Tyler. Good to have you aboard. Thanks for having me. So do you think your experience uh, flying jet fighters is going to help you uh judge this little contest? Well, I think uh, every pilot can appreciate any kind of plane that's built, especially a glider. Uh, you know, the thing that makes a glider so special is it doesn't have an engine. And I flew around with one or two super powerful engines. However, they would quit occasionally and take a fighter and turn it into a glider. And then you really appreciate gliding at that point in your career. What do you think of the two teams' designs? Well, the Hicks family has a monoplane almost like a hang glider, a souped up hang glider design that's going to have a tail to it. The Miami gearheads have a biplane, which, as, since it's a biplane, it has two wings, it's going to produce more lift. But the difference between the two is that the monoplane from the Hicks family is, I think, going to be 
easier to build than the biplane. And so the Miami Gearheads have taken on a really tough challenge here to put a biplane together in 10 hours. With much to do, the Gearheads have chopped up everything in sight. Pieces of wood are piling up. And hot-headed Frank is baffled by the sight before him. Hey, stop that saw and explain us what we're doing because I have no idea. Don't worry, don't worry. No, 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 you gotta tell us how we can work. Captain Milton goes over the design once again. Yeah, that piece of wood is to put support here. So we just glue that and staple it? Yeah. Okay, and that's it. Wood glue and nails and... Frank seems to have the gist, but there's no harm in double-checking. What exactly are you working on here, or do you even know? Uh, yes, I do know. <laughs> okay. Well, I just actually, me and Anthony, we just learned how this whole plane glider thing is going to work. Basically, what we're cutting, there's going to be the little reinforcement pieces that go up and down on the wings. Uh, that create, what is it called, a hydrofoil? Airfoil. Airfoil. What you're cutting is airfoil. Hydro, air, water, I don't know, whatever. Frank is cutting battens, which they'll bend over the wing frames and cover with fabric. This creates an aerofoil shape, which gives the wing its lift. Here's how. As wind hits the wing, it's split by the leading edge. Air that moves over the top has to go faster than air that goes underneath. This creates a lower pressure at the top, and the wing is literally sucked up. But if there's not enough suck, the plane will stall. So how are things coming in Carpentry Corner? Well, not so bad. If it was like wood shop in school, I'd give them an A+. <laughs> They're doing a great job. They know how to cut wood. <laughs> they made good piles of sawdust. Very nice I mean, piles of sawdust. Those. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> And confident with their plans, you think? Well, here's, here's, a, here's a good uh, example of the confidence level over here. I go over to ask Frank. Frank, how's it going? Uh, I don't know. He doesn't even know what he's doing. He doesn't even know what he's making. <laughs> he was just grasping the concept as I was talking to him. Figuring, oh, we're building a biplane. <laughs> okay, I gotcha. And then at the end, we're going to have a little screw iron. We're going to thread that cable you brought in. And that's going to be the back of our wing. So this one sets this angle. And then that one. Over at the Hicks household, Barnaby keeps an eye on the team's progress. They've built two massive wing frames. But the battle for control is still bubbling underneath. Okay, it's important that it be one plane, you know, it'd be better if it's a single band, but if, if as long as we... Well, this, we're doing something that it's only going to take just for one day's use. It's yeah, but not going to be something forever. I understand that. Okay, we'll build on cabinet now. Forget the plane, he likes the wood. Okay, cabinet. Back in the chaos of the Red Camp, Frank is plotting an uprising of his own. He doesn't want to build a plane anymore. So if you go right have, to have Kathy and Tyler, maybe we could change. Instead of building a plane, why don't we just build like some furniture? No, we can do that. Or greenhouses, because all you gotta do is take the wings. Well, we have a lot of wood, why don't we build a campfire? Ooh, and the, and you go. know who's gonna win? The, you take it to the auction, the one who's giving oh, you more it. money, then you win. As long as they keep the termites away from us. Wrong wing! We need the wrong way. You're on the wrong wing. We want to be over there. Nah, I've got not enough cable. Well. Fed up with the family feuding, the sisters have disappeared well, to the junkyard to for a quiet, girly chat. Both the guys at the Build Bay are crazy. They're having a hard time communicating with each other, and so they're having a hard time communicating with us. Oh, are they? <laughs> what are they? What are they disagreeing about? Um, yeah. There's been a constant changes all along the line, which I think has been has been good for the design of the plane, but it's just been trying is all. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, it's okay. So what can you do to kind of like get some team bonding back? We we're kind of taking turns being in the bay with them. <laughs> you just can't bear to be in there. You're just like, what can we scavenge? <laughs> it, it takes one of us to defuse the situation. Are they not? They're not quite seeing eye to eye, or are they just have? Are they having different ideas about design, or is it different? Mm -hmm. I don't think the other one knows what the other one's thinking. Oh really? Yeah. They're on two totally separate communication levels. There should be way more drawing and way less yapping. Over the wall, the gearheads are more concerned with cloth than conflict. Wonderful. They've bodged together their first wing frame. And with things taking shape, Chuck weighs up his options. But Missy, our judge, has a major concern. Well, the Hicks family has a standard tarpaulin, it looks like, that they're going to use. And the Miami Gearheads also have a tarpaulin, but the Miami Gearheads design, which is the biplane design, it's automatically a heavier design because it has that much more material involved. And so it would be better for the Miami Gearheads if they had a lighter type of fabric. Aware of the problem, Chuck alerts the team. Hey, Frank. 
Yeah. You know what I think? Out here. I think we're gonna really need to go out and look for a little bit of lighter plastic. Why, wow, that stuff isn't that good? Well, it'd be all right, but it's, it's kind of on the heavy side. Have you changed your mind on who you put your money on? Do you stick with the Hicks family or do you come over to the Miami Gearheads? Well, if I was a betting woman, and I am, <laughs> <laughs> I'd stick you, with the Hicks family. Yeah. They are so much further along than the Miami Gearheads that this is going to come down to a time race. The construction is going along fairly well for them and even though their materials aren't ideal, I think that the Hicks family has really come together as a team as opposed to the Miami Gearheads. So how many you needed? Yeah. So the Hicks family are still front runners. You, I also picked up an escape hatch. Oh, so what? Like an escape hatch. Escape hatch, okay. okay. And as long as those sassy sisters keep the boys amused, it's okay. domestic bliss at the Hicks. Perfect. That's too slack. We're going to have to snug that up a good bit. Teams, this is your five hour time check. Five hours. With time against them, the gearheads rip the yard apart in a last ditch search for some lightweight fabric. That's how you, that's how you do it. Will the magnificent men of the Miami Gearheads be able to turn their pile of sticks into a fabulous flying machine? And will the Hicks family really be looking skyward with nothing but a few bits of aluminium and a bundle of tarp? Join us after the break. Welcome back to Junkyard Wars, where our semi-finalists are heading down the runway, but they've got a long way to go before they take off. With most of the day gone, the Miami gearheads have turned a mind-boggling muddle of wood into the skeleton of a biplane. Are we having fun yet? But they've got no lightweight fabric to skin it. The hunt continues. Over at the Hicks. Yeah, yeah, I know. Ain't got time to come check on Sam. Despite the leadership battle, they're forging ahead with their giant monoplane. Expert Barnaby's been running this family show, but salty sailor Sam is poised to regain command of the ship. Drill the holes through this, put the bolt in it, take the chain hoist, or the hoist down on that end, lift it up to hold that beam up at the right height you want. A lot of things to do. His obedient daughters jump to attention. The keel beam goes into place and completes the cockpit. But Sam has spotted a design flaw, and he's fuming. You're not happy with it. No, you come up here and you move this piece right here, you sit down on it, and the whole thing just starts twisting. Say, if you're going off on a takeoff, and this thing starts wobbling like this, what's it going to do? Yeah, because, I mean, I'll sit on it again. I sat on it the first time, and yeah. What it, if we braced it, it here and here, Dad? It wobbles. It does, it does wobble, and I'm thinking if well, I'm going down fine. a hill, yeah, it's going it's it's to be hard there. to just balance it. Sam's worried that when they launch their glider at a high speed and down a hill, the frame is so flimsy it'll wobble. The pilot won't be able to control the glider and they could crash even before they take off. But strengthening the cockpit will add unwanted weight. So how are things in uh, Hicks Family Center? Sam doesn't think that the, the frame is sturdy enough and it's gonna hold the wings. Oh, no. And actually, I got a chance to sit in it, and I got to tell you, I, I just move a little bit, and it just it wobbles so all over Sam. the place. I'm actually with Sam on this. I don't think it's strong enough. Out oh. in the yard, Anthony makes a lucky find, which may just save the gearhead's bacon. Ah, yes. Okay. That's it. Got it. That's better than what I built my first one on. At last, they can skin their wings. Hey Chuck, what's the deal here? Where do I start? Once no, Chuck works sure out which one is which. Okay, this is the this is the top left. Now is that what's that one behind you now? This is the top is that left. A Thirteen feet foot. This is the top left. You look. No, that's a that's a bottom. Fasten your seat belts, teams. You have only three hours, three hours to finish your machines. Frank! Yeah. Three, three hours, hours, man! We have three hours! You, we better get rolling. I can't even spell my name in three hours. We're working here like... With the team starting to bond, it's time to glue. Ever optimistic, Chuck thinks he tastes victory. Oh man, this stuff tastes... Over at the Hicks Ranch, they're working yeah, on the okay. wings too. This way. Okay. Okay, you know what? We got to get both wings and see if we're going to make it. Okay. 
Sam is still fussing about the floppy fuselage, and with Barnaby's back turned, it's the perfect opportunity to add a couple of braces to strengthen the cockpit. They've really, they're really coming along. They are starting to cover the wings. They've got their fuselage. They've got the tail cut, ready to be mounted, and the same with the wings the cockpit's made. So they're doing a little bit better job of multitasking than the Miami gearheads. The Miami gearheads? Uh... They're picking up the speed. That's, it's impressive. They've really started to come together. I think they've got some of the finer points of the woodworking down, which I understand that the Miami gearheads were typically, uh, they have a lot more experience in machining. So, who's your money on? Well, I hate to just take the party line, and, and I'm so boring, but I'm still with the Hicks family. The men from Miami are still underdogs, but the chaos has calmed and they're nipping at the Hicks heels. We have our rudder. Da, 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 da. With their wings piling up, they've outgrown their shop, so they break for the border. It's not in the way. It's not in the way. Outside, Fari Frank's been quiet for a full hour Too and much. needs to let off some steam. Too much. Down. Anthony's nearest. Hey man, too much is not up or down. If you're going up, when I say too much, it means go down. I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry. I'm dealing with an underachiever. Just kidding. <laughs> Over the other side, the name calling is a little more, well, loving. Have That's I ever sure. told you how handsome you are, Dad? What a lucky, lucky girl I don't, am. Don't give me a hard time, man. <laughs> Even Barnaby's feeling the love. You know, I know it must be advancing dehydration, but I am becoming guardedly optimistic we're gonna pull this off. He's so happy he makes himself some foot pedals. <laughs> yeah, right though. These will control the tail surfaces, which Jakey's lovingly sewing together. So their control systems are almost complete. Let's let's test it out, shall we? Yes, indeed. Oh, yes. Wonderful. I could fly across the country on this. In fact, I did. <laughs> right. We have a stick. We have controls. Okay, we've got to bodge up some rudder pedals. As soon as we get the elevator mounted, we're going to take cables off of that's these two. That's not going anywhere yet, yeah, is it? No. No, that's that's my primary. That'll be my pitch control. So that's down. Down and down. up. Down. Houses get bigger. Up. Houses get smaller. Unless you do it too much this way, and then they get bigger fast. <laughs> uh, <laughs> bigger backwards. Yes. <laughs> the Hicks controls will be nice and simple. They'll have one lever that moves the elevator tail, which will allow them to take off and land and they'll have two foot pedals, which make the rudder and the glider go left and right. I've heard a rumor that you're, you can be quite obsessive about lightweightness. In fact, I heard- I can be obsessive about bloody near everything. <laughs> uh, but when it comes to airplanes, it's guaranteed. But I heard a story about one time when you were going in one of your airplanes that you Oh yes, built. I drilled holes in my toothbrush to save weight. And I cut strips out of my charts, and I left with two pairs of underwear, two shirts, I would wash the pair I had just worn in the hotel at night, and when I finally got over the Rockies to flatter land, because it was a very low-powered airplane, threw the dose pair out the window. Straight to the local emporium to buy another change of clothes. <laughs> it's so, the drilling holes in the toothbrush one that I love. That some would say that to was detail, obsessive. Actually. But I made it, so it was worth it. And you think that's what did it? You'll never know. Over the wall, the biplane is still in bits. But with time marching on, they think about controlling their beast of burden. And then two down, we'll put the pedals here. Put the pedals here. And that goes for the and landing gear. that goes gear. for the landing gear, come down to here. Milton's conjured up a classy cockpit. Anthony's at the tail end of things. Like the Hicks, they'll use up, down, left and right. Is everybody happy? It's all guns a-blazing in bandito country. Okay. It looks like they're building a like a walk ramp, a bridge or something well, I think at they've this got point. the bridging machine thing. It's kind of like, I think maybe That's they've right. got to build a glider on top of a bridging machine. Like That's each it. challenge adds to the one before. They have bridging machine <laughs> on the brain. So over here we've obviously got a cannon glider. That's a slightly <laughs> disconcerting There is, there is a, a room for a cannon mounting on this. Actually, so that's it's, true. It's, they're working on that, I think. Yeah. But look at them. Because there have been tense moments on either yeah. side, I think, over yeah. the course of the day. But actually now, Buoyant spirits. Uplifted uh, yeah, almost. Yeah. I'm happy. <laughs> are you a gearhead? <laughs> yes. Or are you one of those grasshoppers? No. Teams, it's the call you've been dreading all day. One hour. This is your one hour call. We're doing good. Keep jamming. I'm asleep. We have seen that already. Yeah. Well, with I'm time running out, the gearheads are catching up with their burgeoning biplane. This, this thing. 
Well, the Miami Gearheads have really been industrious in the past few hours, and what I'm really liking about their design is their wing. Their wing is really nice and stiff. The battens that they've put in, the ribs, are keeping that wing nice and tight. What about the Hicks family? Well, because the Hicks family, the comparison is that their complete structure is almost finished, but their wings are really loose. The fabric is not on as tight as it could be. They don't have any battens or ribs in there to tighten it up. There could be a lot of turbulent air, a loss of lift under those wings. The Hicks wings are very simple. Just a piece of fabric pulled over a large pole at the front, attached to wire at the back. They hope this will give them a nice aerofoil shape. But if the fabric isn't tight, their wings will go flappy and their glider will drop like a lead balloon. This is it, last chance. Where do you put it? you go with the Hicks family or the Miami Gearheads? I'm still leaning a little bit towards the Hicks family, but I think that if the Miami Gearheads continue to rally like they are, we could see a real competition tomorrow. Okay, that's too vague. I need a definite. Oh, What's it going to be? Oh, I said I was leaning towards the Hicks family. We're leaning? That means you're going with the Hicks family? Do I get one more call on test day? Maybe. Right before they fly? Maybe. You might be able to walk out on the wedding. Who knows? All right, I'm still going to go with the Hicks family, but I reserve the right to change my mind. Absolutely. You can make any reservation you want at any hotel you want. That's not a problem. <laughs> I'm going to go with the Hicks family myself because oh, oh gosh, I feel I think, better now. I think they've got the they've got the winning design. Well, I hope that the the uh, Miami Gearheads come through because I really would like to see this clever design get <laughs> off the ground. By the wing coming through. With the judge only just on their side, the Hicks turn their attention to their second wing. I want a helmet. Can you believe it? Teams, only 30 minutes. 30 minutes to finish. Hey guys, 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 please, please, please. Sorry, sorry. I'm trying to put the screw. If I put the screw, it's going to be 100%, so no move this junk. That's it, that's it. In the final furlong, the fellows from Florida step up a gear and work as a team. Milton and Chuck add an aluminium backbone and mount the all-important tail controls. 15 minutes, teams. 15-minute yeah! time check. With minutes left, even Barnaby and Sam are working together. The sisters finish the tail surfaces and want to christen their creation. <sighs> How about if we call it Two Men Clashing Heads? <laughs> <laughs> we made a stretcher. Which one of you is wounded? There's just enough time to connect the controls. Watch out! Gearheads are coming! The gearheads are coming! And they're looking red hot. Like bailing wire from the back end of that to the to the extreme. Keep it going. Pick one up, man. Too heavy. That's for the seat. Man. Yeah. Okay. We're we're great on that. All right, teams. Five, four, three, two, one. Tools down. Teams, you did a great job today. You have made gliders out of nothing. Yeah. Go get some rest. See you tomorrow. So, will the Hicks family affair stay stuck on the ground or soar through the sky? And will the Miami Gearheads haphazard biplane rise to the challenge, or is it all just hot air? Find out after the break. <laughs> Welcome back to the Junkyard Wars semi-final. We're in the hills above beautiful Santa Barbara where our two teams of intrepid aviators are about to take to the sky. Under Junkyard rules, the teams have one last chance to make vital precision adjustments. So out comes the duct tape. And then down to the important deed of decorating. With a big red cross, the gearheads christen their biplane the Red Baron. Hoping to win the Battle of the Sky, the Hicks family have named their monoplane Stress Hawk. I can't imagine why. There's just time for a final few domestic chores. <laughs> Captain Sam's a dab hand at sewing, too. Seems to Sam, oh yeah. The rules are simple. The teams will have three attempts to get airborne. They'll start from the hill and their flight time will be measured from when they take off to when the first part of their machine or themselves touches the ground. The team who stays in the air the longest will be through to the Junkyard Wars finals. With tinkering done, things are abuzz in the red camp. 
Worried that their plane is too heavy to take off, the gearheads have hatched a foolhardy plan. Don't get the tail. They think their test pilot expert Chuck is a little, well, portly. So they've nominated wiry Captain Milton into the hot seat. Milton has flown ultralights before, but nothing like this. So, after a brief bit of tutoring from Chuck, he's ready to go. Yeah, they got cruise control and other stuff. We got crutch control. Okay. What does our judge Missy think about this reckless turn of events? The bottom line at the end of the day is pilot experience, don't you think? I think so. I think that these, both the aircraft, the Miami Gearheads, the Hicks family, in a perfect world, I think they could be extremely competitive. I think that the gliding distances, if they're flown well today, are going to be, it's going to be a close race. But I think that it's really going to come down to pilot performance. Okay, you've seen them both. You've seen them up close. Who do you go with? As much as I would love to see this biplane fly, I'm going to have to go with the Hicks family, You're not a plane. Sticking with the Hicks. I'm sticking, and because I'm a pilot, and because I know the importance of pilot experience, I'm going to have to go with Barnaby. All right, we'll see if you're right. Okay. With the judge dubious and Milton's neck on the line, Chuck asks for some divine protection. Hey, Milton, before we, we fly, you fly this thing, we always put a little blessing on my airplanes. So to keep the pilot safe, so just say, God, protect this airplane, protect everybody who flies it, so you have safe landings every time. Amen. Amen. Now it's a blessed airplane. All the saints are on our side now. Safety comes first, so we've allowed each team one chance to test their balance and steering systems, but they're not allowed to leave the ground. Okay, we're getting some breeze. First up, the Miami Gearheads. Three, two, one. And there they go. It's looking good. A few bumps. Frank takes a dive, but Captain Milton keeps the Red Baron nice and steady. That looked great. I was worried about the CG, but it started to fly just before it landed. It's a super cool test run from the novice pilot. Well, what more are you going to do? Well, I mean, we, need to get, we need to get it a little further up the hill. Uh, yeah. He's doing a great job piloting the airplane. and He's the right weight. If I'd have been in it, we'd He's still smiling. be on the... I'm ready. <laughs> if I'd have been in a plane, we'd still be pushing over to the ocean. <laughs> With the gearheads in boisterous spirits, next up are the Hicks family, aboard the Stress Hawk. All right, that's good. Experienced test pilot Barnaby is at the helm. The Hawk is ready to swoop. Okay, go. Ready, go, go, go. Oh, much smoother this time, much smoother. Just what you'd expect from a perfectionist pilot. Yeah, it got light. I was using a whole lot of rain. That just happened. The machine definitely got light. Uh, we didn't well, you could feel it kind yeah, of lifting off. It. I could feel it lifting. Uh, we weren't directly into the wind, so we could also feel it rolling. And because the tail was still on the ground, and all my roll control is by yawing the machine. And your body, too. Your body was to the right. It was tipping to the right. When you straighten back it? up, the, the thing started moving to the left. Okay. Coming I'll keep down. that in mind. So. I watched it from the back. Okay. So with successful tests under their belt, the teams are ready to take to the sky. After the obligatory coin toss. Let's flip that coin. Hey, heads. You go. Okay, good luck, guys. Good luck. The Hicks guys. win, and Captain Sam nominates the gearheads to go first. Remember, it's three runs down the hill each. The wind is up. The hill is steep. The crash helmet is on, and Milton's ready to fly. He's keeping his cool. But even our judge Missy looks a bit nervous, and she's got to keep time. Miami Gearheads, it's now time for the first flight of the Red Baron! It's in the air! Oh, and again, amazing! The clock stopped when the plane bounced, but it's a superb maiden flight, and rookie pilot Milton is thrilled. That was it! What did we get? 3.4 seconds. 3.4 seconds. That's not bad. I mean, Pretty good. For the first 
First, first flight, around. first flight untested. Now when they actually left the ground, they had some, uh, it was a pretty straight flight though. Actually, I thought we'd see a little bit more wobble than we did. It was nice and easy takeoff. What did they do right? I mean, I know it was just a short little three second flight, but what, what did they do right? Well, I, I think that uh, the Miami Gearheads hit Milton driving, he held the nose nice and straight, so that's, that pitch, that was good. I don't think he had enough time to do anything. That's really. right. Yeah. 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 Milton, what? Chuck, I'm happy to tell you that the official recorded time 3.4 seconds. Yeah. All right. So are we, we are Not right bad. now the unofficial official junkyard war high time winner. So far. The gaudler is thrown down, so it's crunch time for the greens. And with the Hicks family honor on the line, Barnaby is getting butterflies. So even seasoned pilots get nervous before a first flight. If you don't, you shouldn't be in the seat. Hicks family, it's time for the inaugural flight of the Stress Hawk. Think good thoughts, Jakey. Think good thoughts. Looks like we're very close. There they go. They are rolling. There she goes. She's picking up speed. There we go. She's up. Oh, disaster. The Stress Hawk nosedives straight into the hill. But is Barnaby okay? You okay? I'm fine, Jakey. I'm okay. How uncomfortable was that? It looked it horrible wasn't fun. from there. It wasn't fun. Are you, actually, you're definitely not her anywhere. No, uh, the harness did everything it's supposed to do. Uh, you know, we, the reason the machine had a cage all around the pilot was good for just idea. such an eventuality. Oh, that wing looks damaged. That looks bad. Yeah. That's not good. Let's take a look at what, they actu what Barnaby actually did. Well, the wind was actually blowing from his perspective, it was going left to right. And as he took off, I think that he overcompensated with his rudder and he just bit the dust. And just took totally it turfed it. No. Uh, and, and I think we were airborne a little more than the 3.8 seconds. Well, we'll get the official word on th that, that in a minute. That they were airborne, so uh, it's up to me. Better check now. in with ground Obviously, control for the official flight. timing. That's, that's one hurting bird. Uh, Kathy to Tyler. Go ahead. Tyler, I was wondering if we have the official timing on that flight for the Hicks family. As a matter of fact, we do, and it's two seconds exactly. Two seconds is a long way off the gearheads 3.4, and the team aren't impressed. It was a lot longer than two seconds. Okay, let's haul that thing out of here. But not a man to bail out, stubborn Sam rallies the troops. He figures there could be a quick fix for the stress hawk. Meanwhile, the gearheads get clearance for their second flight and haul their biplane into position. For the Greens, it's off to the side of the hill for a quick once-over. Well, it's a somewhat undignified landing for the Hicks family, but it's one flight apiece and it still could be anybody's game. See what happens after the break. Welcome back to Junkyard Wars. After their first flight, the Hicks family are in the hangar for some damage control, and the Miami Gearheads are taking to the air one more time. On their maiden flight, the Gearheads took a gamble with lightweight but inexperienced pilot Milton. But their risky strategy paid off with a 3.4 second flight. The Hicks family glider was flown by veteran test pilot Barnaby. They got airborne, but their maiden flight ended up a disaster. Barnaby suffered nothing more than a bruised ego, but the stress hawk came off rather worse. They don't know yet if it's terminal, and Captain Sam wants to give it a thorough going over. Push on the wheel back here, Jake. It'll straighten the tubes out a little bit. With the stress hawk under examination, the gearheads want to better their own record of 3.4 seconds. Now that they've done this first run, what can they do on their second run? to improve their, their distance and time. Higher up and have everybody push a little harder. A little bit harder, okay. Those crazy low riders have gone all out and are launching from the top of the hill. As Milton climbs aboard, the Hicks crash must be running through his mind. But he's ready and prepared to battle the odds. The wind's coming up now, guys. I would not go down there. Why? Listen, you already step stepped off a mountain. I flew off Sandia Peak in oh. Albuquerque. It's a two a thousand foot vertical drop right off the end. <laughs> Miami Gearheads, it's time to take the Red Baron to the skies for the second time.
There she goes. A longer run up this time. Get up there. There and she's in the there air. Go. And she looks fabulous. Yeah. Gliding elegantly like a, like a giant butterfly. The landing is impeccable. It was real smooth this time. It was really smooth. That was so smooth. Of, of what you saw, what did you, what did you think? <laughs> I thought it was great. It was great. <laughs> Get down here. Kathy, are you ready for uh, a little bit of time? Yeah, what was your time on that one, Tyler? Well, our judge, Missy, says it was 3.5 seconds. Oh, oh, oh better. <laughs> 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 You're consistent, that's what it's all about. 3.5 seconds. Plus 3.5, we have 7 seconds. Yeah, it ran up to 10. <laughs> so the gearheads return jubilantly to their hangar. Better check with the hicks on the state of the stress hawk. Kathy to Tyler. Kathy, go ahead. Um, the verdict from the Hicks family is this plane isn't flying anymore. Ooh, ooh, ooh. What, uh, what kind of damage are we looking at? <laughs> it might be quicker to list the damage we're not looking at. <laughs> so be it. So with the Hicks family conceding defeat, we have a winner. Well done all around. First to the Hicks family. <laughs> yeah. A valiant yeah. effort. Thank you very much. Well done. Thank you. And to the team that is going to the Junkyard Wars right. Finals. The Miami Gearheads. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> yeah, baby. All right. Hey, if you thought that was fun, join us for the next Junkyard Wars. Right here.